Hello, Internet. Welcome back to the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Showcase, and today we're going to be seeing Vale. For those of you guys that have always wanted a goth girlfriend, Vale is the answer to your gothy prayers. This is one of the more powerful Mega Lance users, and potentially one of the stronger blades of the entire game. This is thanks in no small part to her unique passive. This is going to be Violence Machine. The cap for the damage bonus that this gets will actually be the same across all affinities, it's just that with higher affinity you will be able to reach this much faster. So at max level, if you were to do a special, any special, six times, then your damage will be increased by a whopping 300%. It's really fast, and she can even reach it faster than Sheba can reach hers, even though this one is a little bit weaker. As well, you also have Void Lance. You automatically get 100% more damage just for attacking from the side. Being a Lance user, you'll be doing this often, and it's really, really great to see that, like, for something so simple, you get a good damage bonus. Not to mention that her third passive, Overture of Blood, increases damage dealt to launched enemies by 150%. So, theoretically, if you were to fight against, like, an enemy with six specials already completed from the side, on a launched enemy, that's going to be a whopping 550% damage. It's really, really useful. And it also stacks in conjunction with the World Tree drop. So we're looking at about 730% damage if you were to get all the switches done. Really, really nice stuff. No, sorry, I did the math wrong. It's 830% damage. 100% damage difference. It's really nice. That thing is, though, in terms of drawbacks, she does have semi-useful specials in the form of a cursed prison. This gives you a guard annulling attack, but depending on how progressed you are into the main story, you may or may not be able to reach a level 3 combo as quickly as you'll need to, especially considering that you'll need to get auto attacks in order to actually build up specials anyway, so that's kind of the thing that you'll have to look at. Also, there is Tainted Palace and the level 1 special. You're going to find yourself spamming the level 1 special a lot, just so you can get your stacks of the Violence Machine. It's pretty good, but again, just because of how the healing works in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, you may not be able to get the damage bonus. Although, potentially, if you did, then we're looking at like 980% damage if you had all the other damage boosts and you're at 30% or less. Really, really nice. And Tainted Palace, it, again, 5% chance of felling a beast. This doesn't work on bosses or unique, so you might not be able to make much use of it, but it's a pretty nice bonus if it does happen. It's just that the way that Veil works, she already does a good amount of damage anyway, so you might not make much use of this. Now, in terms of the Ox Cores, I'm going to be using Fast Blade Switch because I would like to get to my World Tree drop stacks as quickly as possible. Affinity Max Attack, you can go for 50% if you have it, currently I'm using 45%, always useful to have. Again, if you have S rank in Trust, it's really easy to get to max affinity in every battle, always go for that. And there's also Special Level 1 plus 5. The boss that we're going to be fighting for today's showcase actually takes place indoors, so I won't be able to use the outdoor attack up level 5. If you are fighting against an enemy like that, then obviously you will want to put that core on, but currently for the purposes of this fight, I might as well just make my damage a little bit stronger while I'm fighting and getting my stacks for Violence Machine. But otherwise, everything's pretty much straightforward. She's your typical attacker, and definitely very fun to use. I mean, if you were to get her early on in the game, then you have a very good blade to start things off with. Really, really good. So we're just going to go ahead, cut to the video, and I will see you guys there. Alrighty, so here we are over at the demonstration area. We're going to be fighting against Auric, and he's one of the easier ones due to the fact that he has low HP, but the main challenge that you're going to be seeing here is the fact that he has plenty of people to assist him. So I'm going to go ahead and pray that the aggro gets passed over to Tora soon. Currently using Tora with a Poppy QT Pie water type. The reason why is because if I can set it up with Nia and Tora, then I will be able to finish things off with a Dark Tide. Currently, I'm using Overclocking Bangle the or and the, uh, what's it called, the World Tree Drop. What's going to happen over there is that whenever I do a switch, I'm going to get an increase, and because of the way that it works with the Overclocking Bangle, I actually can switch almost instantly. So we need to do it, I believe, 21 times. So let's count together, shall we? So, one, and two, three... <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Four, oh, and, uh, four, and, yeah, also, we, also, if you cancel it out properly, you can actually build up the meter for the specials as well, so we might as well just do that. So again, 
this is going to be one out of them. Yeah, I think that was six widgets that we did, I believe. Goodness, how much damage we're doing already. Alright, and start building up some more meter, getting close, cancel out your attacks. And do it again. Okay, this is number nine. This should be a kill. I, th I think it'll die before I reach it. Yep, nice. Okay, we're going ahead and fight against this guy. Again, I haven't even been using the specials that much. Ten. And... Eleven. I wish I, wish I had a faster attackers, but that's okay. 11, and this is like my third one. Okay, so this is 12. Yeah, we're almost there, man. Like, like this is the funny thing about Veil, vale, though. If you have an overclocking bangle, it synergizes really, really well with her abilities. So again, getting close, switch. One of the other challenges for this, though, is that this particular one has the Blade Virus, which lowers your affinity, as well as a Blade Shackle. So now I will not be able to switch anymore until this effect wears off. That's okay, though. We got the back attacks. We're going to do a pretty tidy amount of damage here. Let's see, and I can't use a special either. So how about we just go ahead and finish this guy off with a chain attack, and do crazy amounts of damage just because we automatically get the damage bonus, and Vale is pretty pumped up with her attacks as well. Look at that damage. Pretty good, but it could always be better. The skill ceiling has still yet to be met right now. Or sorry, the damage ceiling. Okay, uh, I like having a Boreas. Let's have a Boreas on our team, shall we? Do you know what? If I created an orb, this would have been a kill. But that's okay. It's... Like, I'm pretty sure the effect should wear off. Yep. Gonna wear off. Go ahead and do this. Aggro's gonna go off. Okay. And let's... Let's refill our... Actually, no, we don't even need to worry about refilling our arts that much. Just because we have the, um, the switch... The switch ox core. Okay, we got another Blade Shackle. This is going to be a little annoying. This will cost us a little bit of time. But honestly, though, at least we're on a healer. And reinforcements are coming in, so I'm going to quickly hide behind Tor and pray once more that the uh, that the motorcycles will go after him instead. Okay, I can switch again. Eh, should be dead. I'm not going to bother with a Black Abyss. Instead, it's going to go ahead and switch to someone else. Familion Sovereign is going to die pretty quickly. Cancel all auto attack. I could actually go for a level 3 combo if I wanted to. Yeah, you want? Let's uh, let's go. Let's go ahead. Go over, run over to the side. If I can't, if he'll let me go to the side, and do the attack. This should be quite a bit of damage since we're. Yep. Look at that damage, right from the side. Okay. Uh, I'm not gonna fight the Arik yet. This guy is gonna constantly be knocking us back, so I don't want to deal with it. Again, always attack from the side whenever you can until you have to do your back attack, like so. And he's gonna attack me with this. That doesn't matter, because I think we're capped out now. I wasn't really counting, I'm pretty sure that was six switches, though. And who knows how many switches for our world tree drop we need to do before this happens. Okay, so we're going to go start building our water-type attacks. I should have let Nia do it, but that's okay. Venom water. And I think... Yeah, I can actually start switching right now. So you get ourselves this. So here we are. And if I can just expend everything, so just expend this attack. Uh, and do a back attack over here, cancel this. Okay. So that's going to be one orb for us. And this actually might be a kill, now that I think about it, because we have many damage boosts under our belt. Like Again, I, I haven't really been counting. I would have loved a quality of life thing where they could just show us how many. And if that was a topple or a break even, this would have been pretty good. But let's see how much damage we can do now. Again, because we're using a chain attack special, we automatically get the 551% damage bonus. So let's see how this looks. Oh boy, not bad. Okay, so let's see. Also, we're going to be continuing for the second round too. So um, after we break this orb, let's go ahead and use Nim. I think Nim should be okay. There are no elemental weaknesses currently on this enemy right now. All right. Get even more damage. So that's the thing, though. If you have an overclocking bangle, you can really make quick switches like that. I mean, you saw there, just from one orb burst, able to just completely blow them up. Very nicely done. Like, you're gonna start hitting, like, I believe six digits after a certain point with this particular build, too. Eh, let's go Nim again. Why not? I, lo I love this whole punching animation that she does. Uh, but yeah, that <laughs> basically does it for Arik. He goes goes down relatively quickly to Vale, and it's it's really nice though, the thing about Vale is that she complements 
your own growth through the game as you get better and better accessories through the story. So even if you were to start off with her, you have a nice advantage. She's very solid at the beginning, but then when you start going to the end game stuff or post game stuff, then she can really shine due to how reliably and easily she can get damage for herself. So yeah, guys, thanks very, very much for joining me for the Veil Showcase, and as usual, I will see you guys next time. Take care, everyone.